So we started talking about congruence. And when two things are congruent, especially two shapes, that means they have exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. If two things are congruent, they have the same size and the same shape. There are three transformations we can do. There's a total of four transformations. Rotations, reflections, dilations, and translations. Only three of them are con considered congruence transformations because they don't change the, sh the shape. And those are rotation, reflection, and translation. If we rotate a shape, we don't change its size. If we reflect it or we flip its shape, we don't change its size. If we translate or slide it, we don't change its size. And you can always find the congruent parts of two congruent triangles by aligning them perfectly on top of one another. So skipping this question. If two triangles are congruent, then that means all three pairs of corresponding sides and all three pairs of corresponding angles are also congruent. So given that the triangles here are congruent, write the congruence relationships between the sides and angles. So if I know that these two sides or these two triangles are exactly they're congruent triangles, that means they have the same shot the same size and the same shape then what I know is that side MN is congruent to side RQ. Because MN is on the left and RQ is on the left. Moving around, going to the right, I also know that NO is congruent to QP. And the last side I know is that OM is congruent to PR. So those are our congruent sides. Now to move on to our congruent angles. Well, angle M, since it's in the bottom left, is congruent to angle R. Since angle N is on top, and Q is on top there, congruent, so angle N is congruent to angle Q. And our last one is that angle O is congruent to angle P. Now, if we wanted to state that these two triangles were congruent, the way I would write that, we know they are, we're told that, but the way that we would actually write that would be that triangle M N O is congruent to triangle and here's where it gets tricky the deal is when you're labeling congruent triangles the order matters so if I started at M went to N and ended at O I have to go in that exact same order when I'm labeling the other one so this other triangle means, since I started at M, I now have to start at R, I have to go through Q, and go to P. So triangle MNO is congruent to triangle R, Q, P. The order matters. Order matters. So congruent triangles are triangles whose cong whose corresponding parts are congruent. So there's this phrase that you're going to see from time to time in math and geometry especially called CPCTC and that stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 
corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So what that's saying is that if you have two triangles that are congruent, then their pieces of them are congruent. That's all it's saying. Um, there are three congruence properties, and they are reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And the reflexive property says that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. Every triangle is congruent to itself, and that really makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The symmetric property says that if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then we could also say that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC. The last property, the trains of property, is a little bit more complicated. It's like um, if you remember from unit one, we talked about syllogisms, and syllogisms are where we can say things like, if you live in Dallas, then you live in Texas. If you live in Texas, then you live in the United States. And we don't have to go through Texas. We can just jump from, if you live in Dallas, then you live in the United States. Well, that's really what the transitive property is. It says that if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and... Triangle DEF is congruent to triangle GHI. Then we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GHI. Now, please note, you can only do this if these two are the same. That's the only way this works, is if those two triangles are the same. If those two triangles are not the same, then you cannot make that statement. Looking at the checkup, um, it says that for 1 through 4, you're supposed to answer the questions. Given that a triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FGH, which angle is congruent to angle B? Remember I told you before that the order matters. The order of the letters makes a huge difference. So I'm going to write this a little bit differently because I want you to see what happens. Rather than writing their congruent beside each other, I'm going to write the, the triangles on top of each other. Triangle ABC, and I had triangle FGH. Since order matters, what that means is that A and F represent the same point. B and G represent the same vertice, point or same corner. And C and H represent the same corner or the same point or the same vertex. So what angle is congruent to angle B? Well, the answer would be angle G. Because they're both, they're, they're both the middle letter. So number three says given that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle XYZ, what is congruent to QR? So I'm going to write it again. Triangle PQR and triangle X, Y, Z. Well, QR were these two, so that means they're going to be congruent to Y, Z. Number five, for, trying, for questions five through six, complete the statement of congruence. So, they tell you triangle B, A, C is congruent to, and you're assuming it's another triangle they've given you, you just got to fill it in. So again, the order matters. So we've got to figure out where they started. I'm going to label the points they started at B. I'm going to label it as 1, 2, 3. And I've got to figure out which points those correspond to out of the other triangle. Well, I'm looking at where my sides are. It looks like B and M are the same, so I'm going to label that as 1. I'm also going to go over here and I'm going to write it underneath B. If I look at which direction it went, it went to the short side first, so that would be this side. So that means J is 2, so I'm going to write J next. And then 3 was kind of my corner here at the end, so that means R is the corner here at the end. So I'm going to write R next. So it's going to be congruent to triangle M, J, R. Remember, order matters. 
Number seven says find the lengths of the side. So I'm going to again use my, I'm going to write these on top of each other. Triangle ABC, triangle DEF. They want the side length of BC. Since that was the last two, that means that it's the same as EF. And they told us EF was 7, so BC is 7. Okay, so number 9 says assume that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle LMN. So we know AB is 41, MN is 38, and LN is 25. What is the length of AC? So again, the first thing they told us was that AB was equal to 41. And they told us that triangle ABC was congruent to triangle LMN. So I'm going to write them on top of each other. So again, if they're on top of each other, then A and L correspond, B and M correspond, and C and N correspond. So it wants to know AC. That's the first and the last, so that means it has to be the same thing as LN. And we knew that LN was 25, so our answer is 25.